Then they were talking about their sexual proclivities. Oh my god, I literally just said that in my brain. It was terrible. Y'all ain't even see these people yet. Y'all talking about what y'all gonna do, throwing people up against the wall, swinging from chandeliers. It's just cringe because also, have you been an adult? Nobody is doing the things that they project that they are doing. Let me tell you something because I be talking crazy stuff. No. <laughs> Let me say, well, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. Ah. What I'm gonna do is go to bed. <laughs> okay, I'm going to sleep. Hey, my love. Thank you so much for joining us again. Welcome back to our new season of The Connor's Couch. Yes. Okay, I'm your girl, Intasar, but you can call me Zar, okay, because we besties over here. And this is my beautiful husband, Joseph. And today, like every other day, we are talking about love. And to be more specific, the newest season of Married at First Sight. Yeah, um, cheers to being back and having a new season and a lot of exciting things. Thank you for slowing me down, baby. Yes. Joe made me espresso, you guys. Yeah. And if you ever hear anybody call it espresso, it's because of me. Yeah. I said it first. We're back. Um, we have a lot of exciting things cooking for our, you know, this season of our our little um, podcast. Not our little. Don't here. don't don't deprecate us. Okay, our great. This you know, big however. podcast. First of yeah. all, y'all, would y'all gonna tell me I'm still melting my wig? Honestly, I'm not taking it off. I don't care. You don't. You don't need. I to. don't need to. I, and this is not why I'm out here. This is not doula hair. Shout out to them. Uh -huh. But <laughs> you're right. This is super exciting for us to come on back. We are now in Chicago. Married at first sight is filming in Chicago, which to me is a beautiful seat, like city. Let me tell you something. First impressions. Yeah. Some really good looking people in Chicago. Yeah, I thought this is a good looking bunch. Yeah. Um, overall, they typically, you know, kind of straddle the fence uh in that in that category but this year i think um they kind of knocked it out the park as far as just we're not talking you know love island but just for like you know the type of people that we expect to be on a show like this yes um i think that they uh did a really good job it's just it's just first impressions as far as aesthetics you know i agree i agree I, and, and that's just based on looks yeah like i don't think there's really any misses in this cast but i do um I also like that it feels like they're skewing a little bit older. And and, and I think it's I kinda I'm love exciting. That. I'm, I, I think I love that. Because I just, and I think a part of it is we watch a lot of these other shows and it's a lot of kids saying a lot of dumb stuff. Oh, they say not, a lot of dumb stuff too. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's not. I'm saying even more so on all of these oh, yeah. other shows, they say insanely stupid things. And most of the time, it's just because of youth. It's just because you should not be in this position to do anything this serious in your life. I agree. Like marry somebody, you know, that you've yeah, never thing. met before or get married at all. You or know what I mean? get married at all. I agree. I agree. So we are here with Michelle. Michelle's 38. David is 35. Michelle is really a cute girl. She is very pointed in her conversation and how she speaks about relationship, which is really, uh, it felt harsh like for example she said something that she doesn't need anybody to protect her or provide for her she is looking for a partnership and when I, we talk about stupid things people say to me that's such a uh, a silly thing to say because then she also values somebody who is able to provide at a certain level yeah i don't like when people start off like that Why? like i don't like the because to me, that tells me that you're not ready for partnership. Why? How you get there? Because coming into, imagine you're getting a new teammate. Imagine you play on a on a on a soccer team, right? And they're saying we're bringing in so and so. They're flying in. Uh, they just moved here from Alaska, uh, and then they play you an interview of that teammate. And the teammate, the first thing out their mouth is like. I don't really need anybody to have my back. I'm I'm super independent, super solo. Like mm. I really don't need teammates. Like 
It that's did not, sound like that. You, that's not how you come into a situation where you're going to literally be tethered to somebody for the rest of your life, where you are going to be dependent on them in yeah. so many ways, financially, emotionally. I mean, you just, I, to me, you're, when you speak like that from the very jump, it just indicates that you're, you haven't made the mental shift mm. that is necessary to be successful in partnership. I just feel like... I so there's this thing that people say like you have to be two whole people in order to be in a marriage right and I don't necessarily believe that I think that there has to be room to be completed you know what I mean like and I think there is such a a scarcity we're so scared to be vulnerable in that regard like you know I want somebody to come in and you know do I feel full yes but I do want to feel complete and in partnership and collaboration and union would make me feel complete like you know what I mean I do think there's like oh you can have this finance or this job or this whatever but I think it's okay to be open enough to receiving another quarter in your life you know what I mean? another quarter to your pizza and i think it is absolutely necessary and vital that you have a certain level of vulnerability in coming into a process like this and coming into a marriage period yeah and so when i hear people talk like that to me it just speaks to the lack of vulnerability that they have and to me you have to have a, a piece of that before you are just married period let alone married on tv in front of millions of people to a stranger well let's talk about what they want in um a relationship so michelle said she, she said that she likes light-skinned black guys who are tall and built and that was such a specific ask i think i was surprised because this is the first to me you can drop down in the comments and let us know if we missed something but to me this is the first time that i've been watching this show where any of the uh any of the people on it spoke to race like, i know i want a black guy i know I, even you know him I mean? saying I've he never, wanted blonde hair and blue eyes i thought that was and he's and he also said white woman he yes. also said white woman uh, to me it's just the first time that i, I it just was drawing to hear because typically they allude to it they say yes. i want tall brown i like darker features they say stuff like yes. we hear that a lot i want them to have darker features or i want them to have a darker i enjoy a darker skin tone you know and they really saying like i want him to be black black but uh I, so that was the, it was just the first time that, that I've heard it. So I was like, okay. It kind of took me, threw me for a loop. You know, she obviously wants someone that is self-sufficient, can take care of themselves and all of those things. And what we find out about David is that he comes from such a loving family and he lives in the basement. Yes. Of his uh, parents' house. He has his own entrance and everything like that. But he's actually more nervous than anything about his spouse finding that out than, you know, meeting him. Like, I think he feels confident in the process. But I think that is something that would give anybody pause. You know what I mean? Yeah, and not knowing the person or the situation coming in, I can understand how you would uh, have some reservations and sharing that information because the stigma is, oh, you a bum. You know what I mean? Yes. And he doesn't come across like that in explaining the situation. Like, you know what I mean? And, and we know a lot of times that to be more of a cultural situation than anything else. Um, but I can understand his reservations. And I think I want to touch on that. So I think the thing about interracial dating that is so um, a fi it's like a dance. Right. And I think sometimes we all think that we share American culture. And American culture is whatever, and I mean this, and this is no shade to my Caucasian brothers and sisters because I love y'all down. But s sometimes people believe that American culture is white people culture, okay? Yes. When in truth, when you're dating interracially, you are bringing in a whole nother energy, a whole nother nation, a whole nother world of culture. And I think that... Although at first saying it, right, because I told Joe this, I lived in a house with three generations. So it was me, my grandparents, and my mom. I mean, my, yeah, my mom and my sisters, are, and we all lived in the house. My uncles, everybody. It was just like people just coming in and out. But culturally, that's what we did. We just went to my grandma's house. Was it not 100 people in the house? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like that's really just how we kind of lived. And so... And, 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 and would have let you stay longer. I remember when your mom didn't want you to leave. 
He but, wanted you to come back. Because it was really like, if I'm not married, what are you leaving for? Like, yeah. you don't have, you know what I mean? Like, what you going out there to be on your own to do what? Yeah, you know right, what I mean? right, right. <laughs> but she was. She was upset. And I think that th- people don't understand that when you're dealing with other cultures, and we'll get into this, that you have to, like, kind of, you know, curtail how you see that. So she doesn't know this yet, but I still am a little bit worried that she's going to receive it in a not so great way. Yeah, because that's just generally how, you know. I almost think he's manifesting it. Yeah, that it's it's just generally how you know it's it's typically received is you know what I mean as a as a negative. So I can understand him being nervous about that. She also grew up, um, you know, what she would say is not well off, or I don't want to say poor because I think that's a, not a great word, but for lack of a better word, she didn't grow up the way that she lives her life now. Okay, mm-hmm. and so obviously lifestyle is very important to her, and how she. Um, presents in the world is also very important to her. So that's why I'm saying I'm a little bit nervous about him letting that information go about yes. staying in the parents' house and how she's going to receive that. Yeah, because I can see it potentially being a trigger. And I must say, if I'm being 100% honest with you, I dated a man and he lived in the smallest room in his friend's house, okay? And then out of nowhere, just bought a house <laughs> like literally was like i'm like well if we're gonna take this serious let's do something and so it is sometimes people just live the way that they want to live especially when they're single especially when they're single so, so you gotta uh, take come into this process with that in mind too like yes this is you are not together at this point right this person does not know you so they're not making space for you at this point in their lives because this is a this is just happening but for her to say she, michelle coming through and saying that she's ready for marriage and as open as she's seen my hopes is that she will be ready for this process and just like you know lean in to being with david however he shows up because i must say I love this big man. I don't know what it is about this baby. David gives likable first impression right off the right off. She the page. didn't give likable. She doesn't. She doesn't. She kind of gives me. The more I like, I, like while I was watching the episode, I thought I could be real. No, because she has an energy that's not. Um, it doesn't come across nice. You're the opposite. You come across too nice. Oh, uh, but in my brain, I'm mean. Which is. <laughs> Yes, because in my brain, I'm like, so maybe in my brain, I think I'm her. But like she she doesn't come across warm. She just doesn't come across warm. Warm. That's the word, guys. Warm. So let's move on into Ikechi and M.M. That's our next group. Ikechi is 41. Yeah. Oh, wow. He looks wonderful. Right. 41. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Not that that's old, guys. I'm just saying, like, he looks like a very young man. Yeah. He looks like a very young man. And he is an artiste, a high school band director, college counselor, and he also tried out for the Houston. Yes. So, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about somebody coming in, having tried to get into this process before and and was essentially put on post? Um, I think. I don't really have a problem with it. Um, this isn't the first time that we've seen this on the show or another show. It might be another, excuse me, it might be another show that I'm thinking about that we saw it. Um, it might be, it might have been ready, ready uh, to love. Oh yeah, but, yeah. But yeah. um, this isn't, you know, the first time that I've seen it, and I don't have a problem with. It. To me, uh, it just, you know, comes across like you're really intentional about um, making this thing, making this thing happen, and taking, you know, that leap. Let me tell you something. I- I liked him. Yeah. I liked him a lot. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there are some things, y'all know I don't like when people speak poetically. Yes. And I really don't trust artists all that much, specifically yeah. <laughs> men who are artists. And that's being 100%. I don't give a damn if they're musicians, painters, dog walkers, whatever y'all want to be. Uh, I really don't. And I don't know what that is. But he's like a, his actual profession is is in education, no? That's what they said. He said a high school being director oh okay yeah but he also said he was an artist no he no, yes like he is i was just trying to oh uh, okay yeah, I'm about to say, he did say no that. no no. i was trying to make the distinction of what his because i also didn't remember what his actual profession was but let me say this very handsome man very um i don't know he's got an energy yeah like a like i, I like when black men are men 
You yeah. know what I mean? And he kind of gives that kind of vibe. sure about himself. Sure. That's what it is. When I say men, when black men are men, I mean confident, sure. You know what I mean? Sometimes that can teeter on something else, but I'm not going to say what I think. I'm going to just let it play out. I'm not going to say too much of what I think. But I will say this. The way that his friends, when he told his friends about him um, going into this process, they didn't seem too enthusiastic, and that made me a little nervous. Yeah, they didn't, but um, it really wasn't any different from what how a lot of other people react when they're like, somebody's granddad said, that's terrible. Yeah, they did. Oh, which, that was Alan. Which we watched it twice. The first time, I did not I did not hear that happen. Like, I totally missed it. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a different process, and... Some people are just not, they don't warm up to things that are foreign to them. But I thought it was such a fascinating thing to ask him, how would he deal with compromise? Like, yeah. why did they ask him that? I think that's a good question to ask. I think a lot of people, especially single, go through their life not having to tackle these big things. Yeah. Especially as a single person, because even in relationships, sometimes you don't, you have the option to leave. And I think mm. too often, before you get to marriage, that's everybody's first retort. Like, all right, well, I don't need to handle this. I'll walk away. Do you think you were good at compromising prior to... No. Really? Yeah. That was emphatic. I wasn't ready. You know, I'm going to be <laughs> honest. I don't think... I think that I was bad. I was. I do think I was a little bit better at compromise. <laughs> but not like in a way that... I think I... I, I still think that I had a lot of road to go and i think i still do you know what i mean when it comes to compromise and things like that but i think that now i am it's easier when you're a better judge when you understand your person yeah mm-hmm. compromise is much easier so sometimes it may seem like you're not a person who would compromise but the truth of the matter is you just didn't meet somebody to compromise with but not only Does that, that when you, yes <laughs> but not only that when you're in a situation of marriage you realize compromise is the only option and that's right. that that was I think that's a big thing that people coming into this and just coming into marriage, period, have to is, is the biggest adjustment. Right. Like when you're single, you kind of always feel like I don't have to compromise. We hear people say a lot. I'm not going to change for anyone. You oh must not God. be married because <laughs> I change every day a little bit, a little bit, a little <laughs> bit more. You know what I mean? Actively. I kind of stay the same. But. You know I mean? <laughs> but I think that, you know, that to me is just an indication that you're not really ready because you have to compromise is the only option if there's there's going to be you're going to be at an impasse at some point during the month during the week you have to you have to get to compromise yeah and being in a space of marriage gets puts the onus on you to go oh we have to figure this out i have to figure this out yes yes and that's what i'm excited to see him do you know what i mean i'm excited to see a, a black man kind of come on this show and um he'll be married to mm and really just take care of a black woman like i feel like we need more representation of that and i'm kind of you know i i, I want to I want to bask in some love, and I also want to really bask in some black love. Okay? A thousand percent. You know what I and mean? And I love that they are, because we all, all we have to go off to was really just the, the couple of of uh, moments that mm-hmm. we get to see them, and what's on paper. And when you look at their even their names on paper mm-hmm. together, even that gives a little bit of sauce. You know what I mean? Ikechi and MM. You know what I mean? Um, just both having very different names, very African names. Yes. Like, that's kind of cool to me to see. And I think both are Nigerian names. Yeah. I think I think both are Nigerian names. So it's like, it really is beautiful to see. And not that, you know, that's a barometer for which somebody is going to work. My name is Intisar. My husband's name is Joe. <laughs> so yeah, like, no, no, no. Just, but, just saying like, but if we have to go off of something. It's sounding good. Yeah, Some, somebody yeah, yeah. was kind of working back there. We right. think. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Heavy on the thing. Because y'all have a way of ripping my heart out. So I'm like, the bad I'm being cautious. Is low. Right. But if I could give them a score first impressions, I think we got something with M.M. and Kate. And mm-hmm. Katie. I don't feel the same way about David and Michelle that I feel about M&M Yeah, and no. Katie. Yeah, I don't well, know. Well, M.M. is a nurse practitioner. Got her stuff together. Mother got a cute little house, okay? Um, really cute. Has her own practice. She's first-generation Nigerian. 
She's very enthusiastic. Is that a good word? Yes. A little too much so at times. I kind of think a little bit. Yeah, sometimes it's like, what's happening here? You know what I mean? And I want you to be excited. And this just might be a me thing. Like, I want you to be excited. You, This is an exciting time. Get married, period. Let alone yes. on TV and the nerves and everything like that. I get it. But sometimes I it's, I cringe a little bit. You know what I mean? I, oh, my God. If I never... First of all, I'm about ready to call Beyonce on the phone, curse her the hell out for saying that she want to see her husband. Because if I see, hear that shit one more time... Oh, my God. Yo. I actually don't want to see my husband. That, y'all done turn me <laughs> off for want to see my motherfucking husband. Because I just don't understand, like... I love that you're enthusiastic. And it's funny because... Thinking about arranged marriages, it's not far-fetched in Nigerian culture to have an arranged marriage. Yeah. And I have a girlfriend who's Indian, and she was matched with a man, and they were dating and everything like that. And she was just as excited. Mm -hmm. Like, she was really excited. So part of me feels like, okay, like, let me get, let me, let me come up. You know what it is, man, like I said, this is might just be a me thing, but over excitement period it's always comes off yeah it always comes off as red flaggy to me and not even just in relationship like it doesn't in matter life. what i'm in life like if i'm in a band and we're about to play a show and the bass player is a little i'm like he's gonna fuck up every minute of this show like i'll be like i can't do it like get yeah. me away from him you know what i mean because she know even when i'm about to do something big i'm generally I'm, I'm almost suppressing it I'm almost like, yeah, we're going to... Yes. Beforehand. I might be super lit afterwards. Yes. But beforehand, I'm just kind of like, we're going to do something. You know what I mean? Yeah, it could be the... Do an arena. Yeah, you know what I mean? You know. So, because I just think, manage expectations. Yes. Go and even kill. Like, I want to be Jalen Hurts with it. Like, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. So, whenever and everybody's I, not like that. And, and I, that's why I say it, some of it is just a me thing. It's just a preference thing. Like, but I do tend to be like, what's happening here? What you about to do going into this being a little doing too many backflips? Yeah, and also not about a man. <laughs> I'm just like I'm just like it's I'm not right. singing, tooting, dancing, hooting about a man. I'm just not about to do it, okay? And you don't even know this man, which makes it even scary. <laughs> you have to ignore her. Girl, I'm do, frightened. Like. I do think that MM <laughs> is going to be very relatable, uh, yes. come across very relatable, especially for black women, because the, she has a very relatable plight. She said something that um, to the effect of I'm at this point in, in, in my life because I put my career over, you know, my personal life. And so that is a part of why I'm, I'm, you know, 34, about to be 30. She just turned 35 and, and I don't, and I'm not even in a relationship. Yes. And so I think that that is a very relatable state for a lot of, um, young professional, uh, uh, black and brown women who are very successful. Um, I think they can share in her story. So I think she'll come across very relatable in that way. But also what I like about her is that although she is very professional, she does not give that that's what she's going to lead with. No, she doesn't. And she I love that about her. She did not give that. You know what I mean? I love mean? that about her because nothing turns me off more than somebody telling me what their job is and I'll just ask their name. I know. You know what I mean? Like, hey, what's your name? Nurse practitioner. Like, but you know what I mean? But I do think I, it's different for women because we want to know, but I think that's not something that men value. A man will go pick somebody no. up off the. She but I think for most women, in the tent. <laughs> but I think, but I think for most women to lead with it as a man is a turn off. Like if I'm yes. meeting a woman, yes. I would never be like, "Oh, I'm an executive at." Just, well, you mean, know what I mean? Men do though. But I think it's a turn off. For who? For for most women, you know what I mean? Oh if no, guy, I don't think so. If a guy is leading with his job before you even know his name that comes across as oh yes 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 i understand like, what you're saying but i do think in the first conversation we want to know because what we i'm do not is, saying you don't want to know i'm saying you don't lead with that oh yeah you know what i mean it well, just I, comes lead with, I don't have no money i don't have no money i don't have any intention of making no money Somebody got to come pick me up off the flow and take care of me because who gonna do it? <laughs> I'm, real, I'm a damsel, and I tell all my girlfriends this. You, you remember I was? Oh, I'm not gonna say her name, never mind. But I was talking to my girlfriend. She was telling me this story about how a man asked her for some money. Okay, 
He said he needed to fix something and everything like that. And I said, so what did you tell him you did for a living? She's like, what you mean? I said, you had to tell him for him about, to even think that for he even think him to even think. And I said, that's why y'all dumb. I'm not. Tell, I don't. I don't have no money, sir. I'm, I'm poor. I'm destitute. I ain't got it. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Ask my husband. <laughs> I mean, like, literally, you have all the money. What am I gonna do? And I think that she doesn't give that she is going to center her work no. in this relationship and I love that for her because that makes me feel like MM is actually really ready for this process yeah she's just really enthusiastic yeah, yeah. and that is like girl turn it down uh-huh. like 27 notches let's meet this mother the first yeah. you know what I mean but still loved MM um Madison and Allen I don't know why they paired these two um <laughs> Madison is stunning. <laughs> Madison is beautiful. Madison is 29. Alan is 35. But let me tell you. Oh, you know what I'm thinking? What? So this is my prediction, y'all. Maybe they paired Alice, M- Alan and Mad. Look, Allison. Z's Alan nice. and Madison. Because beautiful women like secure, like men who have security. No, yes. I, I, think, I think they were paired because of the paper. Beautiful. I think they were paired because of the paper. Um, I, I don't, I'm nervous, Mm -hmm. you know, about, um, that part, the, the attraction part of it. I am on his face. I am a little bit nervous about it, but I do think when I saw him, I thought, oh no, 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 no. But (laughs) but here's the thing about him. (laughs) Here's the thing about him. (laughs) Similar to David, once he started talking and you see him, he comes across as very likable. And his mother loved him. And I kind of love that. Yes. And, and the, and his people, his people like him. Um, he comes across as, uh, very authentic. Yes. So all of the intangibles, he has the makings of that guy who may not present as this, as, as this Adonis, but then you get to meet him and you're like, oh, everybody loves him because he has all of these other things to love about Which him. Which more people need to be leaning towards that. Yeah. The reason why y'all, the truth is, the reason why a lot of y'all are single is because y'all want to date the same man. And We're this not ready is Allen's and what's the other black man name that I like? Thomas's in the world. Yeah. Okay. That if you just love one of them a little bit, you could judge them right on up yeah. to where you need them to be. But y'all don't have vision. Y'all don't have mm. um uh y'all don't have an imagination and it shows. And it shows yeah. because you can make them. Listen, just make them what you want them to be. So if he got the money and the job and the house and the you could do the rest. Like, you know what I mean? Sometimes it take a little lifting. So, Alan says he's frugal. He's pretty frugal, okay? He only splurges like once or twice a year on vacation. And he didn't grow up in a house with his mom and his dad. They got divorced very early. Which also is kind of fascinating to me because him wanting to be married is, makes me happy. Because yeah. some people do the opposite, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think that you know, he, he made the statement of like they his parents kind of show him what he didn't want. Um, and that's it. I think that's a just just showing more of his intangibles and how he puts a positive spin on the negative. Yeah. Which I think is just it was also admirable. He's hard not to like. He's hard from, not to like. But that thuggish, ruggish quote, we have to stop. <laughs> And I don't even know how to say this. Right. Because I get that some people think they're saying things to be hip. It, but it feels microaggressive. It it does. And I know he's not saying it to be micro. I want to be clear, but that's what a microaggression is. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. I don't think there's any ill intent or malice. No, I, it, it came across as this is how he is on camera, off camera, yeah. in the shower, in the car. Thuggish, like, rugged, and not that black people have a monopoly on thuggish. But I do think that to oh, I put my fur coat on it. I don't I know, think y'all. That's Am really- I? The funny thing is, so we was in the car the other day, and I didn't even, because I think we were talking about something, I didn't even bring this up to you. We were in a car the other day, and out the corner of my, my, like, my ear, I could hear somebody bumping, like, some old school, um, it was like, what's the song, um, I'm turning up the man, I'm turning up the man. Okay. It was like, something like that. And return of the Mac. Return of the, it was like Return of the Mac or something like okay. that. But they was bumping it hard, right? So I just knew, like, I'm like, God damn, they like turn the joint down, right? But I also just in your mind, you kind of make up the the 
the picture yes. of who this person is. I turned around when we when we go to pull off. I turned around. The guy pulls up. It's he had to be at least this forty something year old small tiny white man. He was he was bumping that John so Ooh. hard, and he was in the car by himself. He must have just got some poo poo. He feeling he feeling electric. But he was in the car by himself. Alan strikes me as that guy. Like he's just in the car yes. bumping Return of the Mac by himself with a fur coat on, like just you know. I completely agree. I just feel like thuggish, freckish. Yeah, no, I, I'm not. I don't know what that means. I don't, I don't know, what know what that means. means, and I don't think it's malicious, and I could be looking into it too much, but it just was weird. It was just weird um, choice of words. So, um, Madison is beautiful. She's an extrovert. Her parents were divorced also when she was younger. So she really just grew up with her dad in the house, um, which I love because he was just such a beautiful man when he was walking her down the aisle. Mm-hmm. He like said such beautiful words to her. And it was just like, I just love seeing men love on their daughters. Yeah, it yeah. kind of made me, I'm going to be honest, it made me, um, I'm about to cry. Because it made me, I want to stab that. Yeah, yeah. I want to stab that. So I just thought it was really, when I watched it, I thought it was really, really nice. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And I just, I so... It just it kind of like moved me a little bit. Yeah, but, it was um, moving though. It was really it was really sweet. But she um, said that she doesn't want to st- at, while she was in her bridal thing said she didn't want to set a standard for what her husband may look like. Uh, she then proceeded to describe her. Husband. I know, literally, like like oh, down, no, no, like, I don't wanna <laughs> like down to a T. Literally, so it was like really fascinating. I'm like, okay, girl. Yeah, but. I I don't want you I really want to know what is the thought process when you sign up for a show where you're going to get married at first sight and you thinking that what you want is even <laughs> and like I, I want to know what that means like you have to kind of divorce yourself I thought not even kind of you have to we if first of all we all know if you're on this show you've seen the show before just full stop you know what I mean even if even if it was after you applied and then they told you you, you need to show up right. on August the 31st and come to this casting uh, call or whatever. Like you've gone. So you should know that no matter what kind of list that you filled out or, or no matter what they have asked of you and your preference, it's ultimately up to a, a completely different set of people that are not one Allison or Madison or David or Michelle, like somebody else is going to be picking these people. Yes. And you have to fully release that to them it and has- understand that it's not going to be whatever you pictured in your mind. That's going to be, that's why it's frustrating when people come in and they're like, Oh, I just didn't expect this to be this hard because yes. I'm not really attracted. And like, Yes. And I also think that you all say, oh, the looks really isn't that important because you want to speak from your higher self. Everybody but says the truth that. But is, then your boots are on the ground. Yeah. And you know, you give a damn what that bitch look like. Stop playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think- everybody says that coming in. And then every season, half the, the, group, the group is like, oh, I'm just not attracted. So it's just hard for me. It's so annoying. I thought it didn't matter. And and the reasons for the unattraction is annoying. It's just like, come on. So I'm just hoping that she's really as open as she says that she is. I'm going to be honest. She's she's not that young. She's 29. She's not that young. But that does give me, that makes me worry. And she says she has a proclivity for pretty men. But what we need to start saying to people, like we got to really start cutting to the quick. Like, okay, yeah, you got a preference for pretty men, but do pretty men want you? Cause, Cause you out here. Like, Hello? You like pretty men, but the pretty men don't like you, honey. Yeah. Cause if they did, would you be here? Yeah. And we gotta really start talking to people like that. Like, but but also just I don't I don't want you to ever, you know, not go for what you want. I just want you to pay attention to substance. And too often people overlook substance for aesthetic. Yes. And then end up holding the bag by themselves or super played. The, but that's the problem, right? I don't even think y'all be knowing what y'all want. And I think I'll, that... Oh, I wholeheartedly agree. The problem with... The, I don't even think you have... And I think it's what you want, right? I couldn't speak to what you want. But, and however, in speaking to a lot of people I know who are like out there and dating, it is so clear to me they want everything, which means that you don't know what you actually want. Yes. Yes. We'll stop. Yes. Did that make sense? And that's and that's why I'm kind of like, mm, okay, like you know what I mean? Because if you thought you couldn't have thought 
you was going to find a man on here that was pretty as hell. And all these other things. <laughs> you just weren't going to know. And ready to be married at first sight. Yeah. So they was going to give you the pretty one? You, not I, that it's not, because uh, what you're going to want is a beautiful man. I would argue that you don't actually want to be married if you want somebody who is literally a picture of perfection. I agree. You just don't want to be married. You just like the idea of being married. I agree. You like the idea of being in a relationship, period, but you don't actually want to be in a relationship. Period. So, um... I'm excited for her, but her friend Kate didn't look as excited for Madison or seem as excited for Madison. So that kind of makes me a bit nervous because I, so you could be nervous for someone, right? But when you give an indifferent response to them in this process and getting married and all these things, I start to think like, what's going on here? Like, you know what I mean? Sometimes I think it's just the, the person, a lot of times people's reaction has more to do with themselves than it does you. And a lot of times your friends judge things you do based off whether it's something they themselves would do or mm, not, right? Okay. And so I, I always take it with a grain of salt because on the one hand, it could be, you know, they know you for your works. Yes. And on the other hand, it could be they're just a judgmental friend who thinks, well, I wouldn't do that, so you shouldn't do it. Mm, so you okay. never know until you know the person a little bit more. That's a fact. So let's talk about Carla and Juan. So stunning couple. Perfect. Yeah. Absolute perfection. Juan, I don't know. I like Juan, right? But I think he's handsome. I think she's stunning. I like Carla more. Juan is 36. Carla is 33. Um, she is a big manifester, which I love that. <laughs> Carla First, is the literal living example of the commercial. Welcome Where the girl is on her phone and she's like, hey, I just found this new part. Oh, that I just yes! Girl, <laughs> you are wearing me out. Which I like. I love My her. first impressions of Carla is likable, um, fiery. She's a clear. You think so? Yeah. I mean, she's she's a clear, you know, a quintessential Latina to me. Um, Don't stereotype Latinas. But um, <laughs> she literally kind of wears me out with the, I just want to be in the wind and I want to flow with the east and the west. And Let me tell you something. I love Carla. And my truth is I aspire to be like Carla in my everyday life. I just live in the real world. And so I'm just like, sometimes I just have not great takes on things. But the way that she looks at life is so aspirational for me. Um, she is so stunning. She's one of six. Uh, her parents are beautiful. What? My point. Go ahead. What do you mean? Go ahead. I don't know. So I she says, don't stereotype. I said. Stop <laughs> it. She's one of six. Her parents are still together and in love. And she is just really, I love the way that she is approaching this. And I feel like she's so open. I mean, but this is a way. Okay, let me say this. Not that MM is wrong for her enthusiasm. But I think that Carla has the equal amount of enthusiasm as MM. But it looks, it re, it's reading different from me. What you mean? Like, she's not singing. She's on her way to Oh, yeah. However, yes. I think she's just as enthusiastic. I do, too. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. If that makes sense, guys. I do, too. And not to say, I'm not saying that MM is doing anything wrong. I'm just saying it's a little bit much. I'm not singing to the man, not today, not tomorrow. I don't even sing happy birthday. That's my husband. I, 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 I do I think, I think so too I can see that you understand what I'm saying but I do think she's excited and ready and she's a hairdresser she has beautiful she just looks good maybe mm -hmm. I just like pretty people I mean pretty, pretty privilege is a thing um, and so I, I that's not it's not foreign, and and I think they, as a couple, they do they look good. To, they look like they would be together. They do know? look like they Kinda. would be together, and I also like that they are both Latin. I think that mm -hmm. that's a big thing. I think culturally, it's really good to see different people from different cultures fall in love and kind of like bring their whatever piece of the diaspora like together. I love that. Yeah. But Juan is Colombian. He grew up. He started. Um, he moved to the United States at seven. So he really was only in Colombia as a baby, but he has very uh, real memories of it. You yeah. know what I mean? And what that experience was like for him. But I don't know. I like, I like one. He does give a little bit 
of Juan gave me some cringe when he started spinning on the floor. I'm gonna just be honest. Yeah, and I think it's a little bit. It, it's get. Oh, sometimes it's given like paid actor. Yeah, I just like he got something he's trying to promote. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't I don't really. Know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't um because cause I like the you know he said you know the party side of him um you know it is a part of the dance and you know being big about his culture and everything like that which i love that um i, I love people who don't take themselves too seriously oh, and all I love of that, that stuff but we can't be at the bar together and you spinning on the floor and, and we uh, you know 35 and 36 years old we just can't do that let me tell you something i've passed on my uh secondhand embarrassment to my husband yes I get so embarrassed when people do like regular stuff. <laughs> they be doing regular stuff. I be like, oh my god, I'm a fate. <laughs> like, no, for real. So in real life, it's just really I don't know. I, I like I think they're gonna work together because they both seem like on the same vib vibration. But I think the here's why I think the fairy thing worries me because I love if you are a if you are a business-minded individual who Juan very clearly is, especially someone who's come from a background of economic hardship, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the fairy thing can wear it can it can wear on your nerves. It can it can it can be very close to the edge. Have you had that those, experience? Yes, I'm speaking from experience. So that's the only thing that I'm a little worried about. Like how so? Give me an example. Like what? Juan is obviously like very organized, yes. right? He's very business minded. Um, you could tell he has a uh, a schedule, and, and you can budget. tell that he has a butt. She she gives. Oh, I don't have a budget. I don't. I just go with it. Like if you're, those are two very competing. Yeah. Um, ways of point of views. You know what I mean? So it, I can see it being an issue at some point but i think i don't know I, I something about her <sighs> there's some people who i think could just attract anyone you know what i mean and she's that person yes yeah 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 yes like everybody doesn't have that je ne sais quoi no you know what i mean and i think she does yeah um but also wine is handsome <laughs> I think that that's going to be good for her too, you know. Um, so her her mom wasn't able to show up to the fitting of her dress because uh, her grandmother was having a birthday or celebrating her birthday in Mexico. But how do you feel about her family? Maybe not. Not all. Her sisters are supporting her. So, like, what do you think? I think that her uh, parents are like deciding not to film. How do you feel about that? Uh, that that's uh, that just comes across as a cultural thing to me. Like they really are not hip to. You can tell that they aren't really hip to this whole thing and what's yes. happening and you know reality TV and all. They in Mexico celebrating somebody's birthday. Yeah, you know they like mean? go ahead, girl, do your thing. <laughs> they, they don't give a. They don't care about that. I think it's just one of those things where this is not a big thing. That this was if she told her I'm she's doing a telenovela or something, they'd have been like they'd have been there. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, I could just tell. It's microaggressive. I I know that they I, they they would have been there. You know what I mean. I yes, just think that this is yes. like whatever to them. You and, know? I think and it's they foreign might think to them. It's like a pet project for her. Yes. Yeah. Like okay, here she go again. Like you doing what? Yes. Well, you know. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Camille and Thomas. Camille and Thomas. They actually get married on this episode. He's forty two. She's thirty two. How do you feel about that? Let me say this. I think the age gap could um, cause a few bumps in a row, but nothing that I don't think. They could, could be get over, yeah. yeah. Um, especially with you know, if they come in with the right intentions, if they come in, you know, being really serious and diligent about um, working through any little issues that they have, I think that they'll be they'll be fine, and, and that's something that they can get past because it's not a huge, you know, it's not a huge um, age gap. And I just think that I think she'll appreciate from what she said. I think she'll appreciate being with someone who is a little seasoned and ready because he's ready and he's been ready because he's a twin now. So we know how weird that can be <laughs> Don't um, do that. because he 
made it very clear that because his brother is married and has been married, he's been trying to yes. get there because twins, you know, even at the even big though age he was in a very um he has been he was in a relationship prior to this. No, he's def- that's what I mean. Like he's obviously serious about doing this this marriage thing. And I think that because of her past and dealing you know, with people who kind of, like she said, they got bored and moved on. I think sh- this will be a refreshing thing for her. Yeah. Um, the little, the twin thing gets weird. He said something like his brother wanted him to marry. His brother's wife is a twin. Yes. And his brother wanted him to marry the, the, the wife's twin. Y'all. I don't think we know, understand that kind adults. of closeness. You are adults. <laughs> like the twin do thing and I'm a knock on wood because I think twins run in my family. And God for if we if we Not ever, God forbid. No, no, no. I, I God forbid if we have twins that they are so creep like just oddly very creepy with each other to the point of like I let we should get married and live in the same house together and raise like they just be doing too much. Like you know what I mean? But they I do too much a lot of the, the, the time. You got also have to under I also think they are maybe a particular case, like a real specific case, because they were also adopted. Okay, so they probably leaned on one another a lot for identity, um, for like, you know what I mean? A lot of things emotionally that and not to say that their parents didn't give them that because it's very clear that they are loved. But I think that you lean a little bit more on your twin because that's actually your only biological tie that, you know, you might feel and, and you may obviously feel very much like connected to these people, but something in you might say otherwise. So you might grow a deeper connection with your twin because that's your person. You think like, you know what I mean? Like we came into this world together. We all we got, especially in his circumstance. Not that, like I said, his his mother and his uh, his biological mom, he just uh, been newly introduced to seven years ago so he has like had come down this path of like really finding himself and finding themselves and i think doing that together brings it does make you uncomfortably close and honestly i think that's okay yeah no it, it's a line and there's a <laughs> there's a line to which it's not okay right yeah, and, I, and, and yeah. especially when you are at these big ages like you know you shouldn't be 40 something years old dressing the same as your twin sibling you know what I mean? Like, I know twins that want to live in each other's skin. Like, in, in but big I adult. want my sisters to live in a house with me. The, the truth of the matter is you don't. You want to live close to them, but you don't want to. You get what I'm saying? Like, there, there's there's literally people who, if if it, was, if it wasn't for their spouse, they would actually live in, like, small living quarters together. You know what I mean? So, I just think that there is a line. We, we get it. Like, y'all got the same face and genetics and blah, blah, blah. We get it. You're close. But there's a line, especially when you're an adult. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, for sure. And so the whole like I want you to marry my wife's like that's that's part of the line like that was weird you know what okay. I mean okay so Camille says these dudes ain't been acting right okay she grew up with both her parents until she was 13 and then they um got a divorce so she is an emotional caretaker and I also think that sh- that means she creates space for people but I just hope that she's in a space to receive that as well yeah. from someone um I love Thomas like love, love, love Thomas. He he's medium funny looking, which I kind of like too. You know what I mean? Because I think that he's not. He doesn't big himself up as much as I think he is. Kind of love that for her. Um, and his twin, you could tell what he could look like if he got a little. You know yes, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think Tom. Zhuzhin. I think Tom. Thomas comes across as very likable. Oh, very. Um, he's another one, very similar to Alan who um, I could just tell from just the, the the little bit amount of time that we saw him, the intangibles appear to be there. You know what I mean? He, he, he appears to be, um, you know, intelligent, vulnerable, serious about this situation, um, serious about <coughs> relationship, um, mature. Excuse like, I, he comes across as very likable to me. He really, really does, guys. I really like Thomas. And um, I like that he's a twin. I like that he now has his biological mother in his life. That means he's on a healing journey, which I also like really love. That means he's doing like the small things to work on himself. Um, His dad passed away. So he feels like he's making his dad proud by being married. So that also is, I don't know. I feel like when men have men in their lives that tell them like it's a good thing to be married and you see how your mother was loved his mom said like be a good husband like your father that shit 
had me like all worked up. Like, you know what I mean? Because I think that's, you come from that. A thousand percent. I remember one of my big memories of my my brother who passed was like, I remember when we, they came out to LA and right as we were getting married, he was like, he, we were doing, we were, all three of us were doing something. So me and my brother, and my nephew, we were, we were doing something and whatever we was doing, he stopped and turned to um, my nephew and was like, you see what, what's going on with Joe and Zara? He was like, this is how you do when you're serious about a woman and you want to be a man and blah, 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 blah. And like, I think that I can tell that Thomas comes from that. You know what I yes. mean? And that was even to see him talk about his father and how his brother say, I, I can I know that he's going to be I know that he's proud of you in this moment Ooh. because of what you're doing like that. That hit me in a, in a, in a soft spot especially because of what I just went through with my brother and everything like that. So I think that it's so important for men to have men like that in your life in a world where it's just get money FBs. You yes, know I mean? yes. So I think that especially with young men, and I could tell that he had that from a young age. You know? Yes, I agree. And, you know, grief is really an undercurrent. In this season. Oh my God, like, so much so, yes. It's really an undercurrent, which is also fascinating because I feel like it's been an undercurrent. How about that? So that's that's so It's really weird. fascinating to see how everyone is navigating, whether it's the loss of someone or just the loss of proximity to people mm -hmm. and how they're navigating it. It's just we all are like really just in this world trying to figure stuff out, y'all. You know what I mean? And it was really, it's really good to see that. And I also just love how he presented his mother. You could tell this is a good man, child. Because he presented his mother with a picture of his dad. Yeah, yeah. Like, so y'all could both walk me down. Baby. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I was just really, I really like Thomas. I'm not going to lie. I think Camille and Thomas are going to work out. Like, I really, I really I do. I mean, I like think that if I had pairing. to um, project a, uh, a, uh, uh, most promising couple to me is it would be them i agree you know what i mean i, I it would for sure be them and then it would be Juan and carla because i don't mm. know something about the energy there makes me feel sparkly yeah and i kind of love that now the, they all go out for their uh bachelor bachelorette parties where they finally meet one another do you think these people size each other up when they meet do you see do you think the guys look and think huh who yes the? i did think that you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. he tall. He, you know what I mean? And not because it's, I don't even know if it's competition. Well, Alan between said it. Enough. Alan was like, uh, you know, I'm I'm standing over here, and um, you know, uh, uh, wine makes me feel like flubber mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. which is weird to me, but which also was a great movie, but <laughs> great movie. But I do think that the I can understand why he said that. Wine is it's he's just. He looks like an actor. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just but I also think that Alan has a confidence about him. That's why it's weird to me because I'm, I've been in a room with a lot of great people. Yeah. I've never felt inferior to anyone. So when I see people. Maybe who, it's not inferiority, though. When I see people who clearly have insecurities. Okay. Like, especially Alan to me, I could just tell that people like Alan. You could tell. So I when he tell. said it, I'm like, why are you, you know, but that's just, it might just be a me thing. Cause I just don't know. I don't understand that. Mindset. But then you're thinking like, what's the caliber of women too? Like, okay. If y'all pick a mug that look like this on a man's mind, what are these women looking like? You know what I mean? Because they got to be beautiful to them. Right. Oh no. I, 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 or do you get that far in the process? No, I mean, no, I, I personally don't, I wouldn't have. Gone there. Went there. No, okay, no. Okay, but I can okay. see how somebody would, yeah. Okay. Um, so they all go out. Uh, it was three days into the wedding. The girls and guys meet at the bowling alley um, separately. Uh, why did I say men are an embarrassment in my notes? Oh, because I said, why is Juan dancing like this? Oh, yes. That's what I was saying. He was doing a spin on the floor, y'all. <sighs> like, like a hip hop, like... Like yeah. he was break dancing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Then they were talking about their uh sexual proclivities. Oh my god, I literally just said that in my brain. It was terrible. Why y'all do that? Which I, I think I they're get prompted it. to by I'm gonna be honest, and I'm gonna break the fourth or fifth wall or whatever number wall it is. I think they're prompted by production to do this because everybody does it every season. And I think it's okay to ask, do how do you feel about it's just not a natural. Your it's just not a natural 
progression, uh, progression in conversation. of conversation, especially for people who you don't know. Yeah, for I've sure. I've been in circles with men that I've known for years and it's never come up. Right. For years and it's never come up. So to me, to just be meeting somebody, my first question would never be like, so how do you like your um, turkey sliced? Yeah, they like, talking about you know being I mean? circumcised versus uncircumcised. Yeah, like, it was just a lot I think they're of... giving, you know, something that they're just give their fed things, I think, in the beginning. Talking points. Well, I don't ask about this. Let's talk about that. You know what I mean? So I won't even put that on them because we've seen every cast do it. You know I'm what not I mean? going to put it on them either, but it is kind of like... Yo, please. we could have waited for this conversation. Cause cringe. Wait till you see them. Y'all ain't even see these people yet. Y'all talking about what y'all gonna do? Throwing people up against the wall, swinging from chandeliers. It's just cringe because also, have you been an adult? Nobody is doing the things that they project that they are doing. Let me tell you something, cause I be talking crazy stuff. No. <laughs> Let me say, well, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that, <laughs> and I go. St- I, what I'm gonna do is go to bed. <laughs> I'm going to sleep is what I'm doing. So I know it's not what you're saying it is. Like, no, we don't have to do that. I guess some people I think are really doing it. But, like that, some of but, my friends, but that's I'm the one like, percent. That's the one percent of you know the one percent. I mean? But this episode, Camille and Thomas get married. She gets really worked up with anxiety. And she was like, I'm not sure if I can go through this. How did you feel about that? That wore me out. I don't like that. It felt like a show to me. Like, girl, you're here. And I like that the producer just was like, why come all the way here to just be like, oh, I'm going to leave? Clocked her. Straight up. Got a right together. Like, what are we doing here? That felt performative to me. And that was a bit of a red flag. Like, this is, like, what are you doing? I don't know if I can do this. Maybe I should just leave right now. It just felt a little performative. And I, I don't, I didn't like that. But let me say this. I loved her sister in the moment. Her sister was like, no, you're getting married. You made this decision. You're going through with it. It is so important. I feel so bad for people who do not have sisters. It is something that makes you so safe and secure and comfortable in yourself when you have other women in your life. You know what I mean? I, you know, I hate when people say they don't like girls and all that. I, like, if you're a woman and you don't like women, you're a weirdo to me. Um, so, but it's like really like I love to see sisters interacting with one another and how she kind of lifted her up in that moment and was kind of her backbone. Like, no, girl, we doing this. I love that. And I loved her dad said something that I thought was so I wish I want somebody on the after show to ask her about this. What did your dad mean when he said we've done a lot of unconventional things in this family? Yeah. I thought that was like really because he was so relaxed in the idea like. Listen, we're all doing, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, things happen. We're figuring it out. Um, and I'm going to rock with you until we ain't rocking with this. You know what I mean? I and like I kind of loved it. I did, too. I like that. And it also says a lot about how he trusts her as a human. Yeah. In her decision making. So, it really made me feel like Camille's really solid, high key. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she looked good. Yeah. She looked good. That face was snatched. She looked really, really beautiful. And I think he was really excited. I didn't love the dress. I just hold the, the net, especially on brown women. Yeah, you don't, I don't like that. Like that. The, it just doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Yeah. But I do think she looked pretty. I think he liked it. I think he's going to be into her. I think he's going to be too into her. And I'm excited for her to experience that. Because I think oh so often what we as women experience is liking someone else. And not someone actually reciprocating that energy in kind. And I think we warp ourselves to believe because I like them so much, they're giving me that energy mm-hmm. back, but they are not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what, what I mean? You see. You're seeing what you yeah. am I lying? Like mm-hmm. you're seeing what you want to see. And I feel like in this instance, she's actually going to get someone. He just seems like a genuinely good guy. Yeah. The nine year relationship is kind of weird to me, but also not. It led him to the situation. The more I talk to men, the more I see a lot of men in his age bracket that haven't been married. You know what yeah. I mean? So I'm not even like, I do think it's some, something wrong if you don't have an expanded level of commitment, a baby, a marriage, an engagement. However, I like Thomas, so I'm making a... Yeah, I don't see any problem. Everybody has a different story and a different journey. Some people aren't... Ble- to me, it is... Part of this thing is due diligence Mm -hmm. and and intentionality and another part of it is the luck of the draw some of us i met my wife when i was a a kid you know what i mean i couldn't have that was a blessing i couldn't have there was nothing that i could have done 
you know what I mean, that was that a brought that, you know, I couldn't I couldn't give you a playbook on that. Right. And I think some people's stories are like that. Some people's stories is the inverse where they've done all the right things and they and they just haven't met that person. And so I don't really. And I think that we should give each other grace. Yeah. You know, the days are long. Life feels short. So it's like sometimes you don't come across those people. Yeah. You know what I mean? That makes you want to take that bigger step. And I think that's okay. And I think we got to stop putting like timelines on ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think it's natural for people, specifically women, because they, you know, at this age, you get your yeah, period. Yeah, and at this yeah, age, you yeah. get, you know, this many eggs left and this and this. So you have this natural almost timeline. But in however, I think that you'll have it when you're supposed to have it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that. It's his time, and to see his brother so excited. I'm more excited for Thomas than I am Camille. Yeah, I'm excited yeah, yeah. that Camille gets the experience of Thomas. Yeah, and yeah. y'all know I don't even be talking nice about men, so yeah. this is big for me. But something about him seems genuine. And this is the kind of man that I be wanting my friends to date, but they won't. That's they a video for it. another day, but they won't. And we can go into it later. Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining us again. Um, I think we kind of did it. It's just really projecting and first impressions you know what i mean we don't have a lot to go off of and it'll be interesting to see how much of your projection is accurate yes (laughs) so our projection is right now i'm saying camilla and thomas is staying oh that's ambitious because it's early i don't it's him it's not her yeah 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 it's him he just seems ready married at first sight been been uh, the batting average has been so low. So low. I'm not giving. I don't even know why they call them married at first. Yeah. <laughs> it's divorce. At this point, the, at first argument. The, 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 the bar is in the basement. Right. So I, I don't know what's going to happen. The bar is in the basement. But give your prediction. Or who's your favorite? My favorite right now would be to. Ooh, I almost gave them a. a, a Tamil. A Kimye name, yeah. you know what I mean? Tamil. Where did I get that from? My first impression is Thomas and Camille, you know, will, will be a strong connection, you know? Well, you heard what he said. Y'all bust down and let us know how you're feeling. What's your first impressions? Who are you feeling? Who are you not feeling? Why aren't you? Thank you for joining us again for our newest episode of The Connor's Couch. We love you guys. Damn, I'm your girl, Zard. This is my beautiful husband, Joseph. Make sure you subscribe to this Mammy Tam channel because it don't cost you a penny. We'll see you beautiful mother jumpers later. Peace. Bye.